break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, everybody. My name is Alice Daniels. And you have to talk can loud? Can you hear me? You can. Can I? Hi, How about everybody. there? My name is Alice Daniels. I own and operate Nantucket Home Healthcare, this little one here. Um, I've been working with the elderly for the past 27 years since I moved to this country. Um, and almost nine years ago, I moved to Nantucket. And shortly afterwards, I noticed that there was a need for home health care services here. And that's when I became licensed and set up the agency. Uh, we employ um, nurses, certified home health aides, um, CNAs. And what does that mean? It's a C certified nurse's assistant. And we also have living companions. Can you talk about the difference between a certified nurse's assistant and a home health aide? Well, their duties are quite similar, just their training is different. Um, and the certified nurse's assistant can actually work at the nursing home, um, but they do the exact same kind of work in the home. Mm -hmm. um, we can provide anything from as little as one hour of care a day up to 24 hour care or anything in the middle. We can um, come to your house in the morning, come back again at night if need be. Um, for example, with morning care, we can stop by and help you with um, getting up in the morning, um, getting bathed, getting dressed, preparing your breakfast, um, remind you to take your medication, maybe going for a walk, doing exercise therapy, doing a little housekeeping, doing laundry, um, general companionship, of course. Is, is there a minimum amount of time that you'll go to a home per week? No. It can be one hour a day, one hour a week. As little or as much as you need, actually. Um, and, and we also provide transportation services, and that could be just to bring you to a doctor's appointment, um, bring you to get your hair done, bring you to church, to the beach, wherever, into town. <laughs> um, so I can stop by at your home and work out a cost-effective care plan with you, for you or for your loved one. See, when I, where I live, getting you to the beach is a much bigger deal, yeah. right? <laughs> this is not a big, right. All in a day's work. Right, right. Um, <laughs> We also, um, our staff are all trained. Um, they're all Corey checked and reference checked. And that Corey check is the criminal background check. Um, insurance? Yes. We carry workers' compensation and liability insurance, and we're bonded. Um, and we're also Massachusetts state licensed. Um, we do accept, we are a private paying company, but we do accept long term health care insurance. It's the only one that we accept. Um, now, now, once again, the reason why I had asked Alice to come is, is for, once again, for a lot of folks, when they think about somebody coming in and doing home care, they're thinking about like long stretches of like people coming in around the clock, 40 hours a week, really significant amounts of time. Whereas a lot of times when you're at home, it isn't an, right, it isn't an issue of having somebody around the you know, what am I going to talk to this person about? They're going to be there for eight hours, you know. It's really having somebody perhaps to prepare a meal. To you know, to right. get you someplace yep. to do some very basic stuff. And it can be short term or long term. Right. It could just be when you come home from the hospital for a couple of weeks or months till you get back on your feet, um, and then we can always reduce the hours or you say bye bye to us. Just depends on the time, how you're feeling, and so forth. Um, so we we are the only home health care agency that's actually located on the island. There are other agencies providing care here, but we're the only ones who actually are located on the island. Um, so, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or and we're going to take all questions oh. right, right at the okay. end. And we're going to, we're going to. can call me at any time, yep. of course, too. You have my car, my number with me. Th thank you okay. very much. Thank you, I guess. Thank Thanks. you. Have a, have a seat. Ne next slide. Um, so, if you're not doing that, um, but you're thinking uh, that you need some home care, uh, you just need to do. I just need to do a very quick home uh, employer law 101. Uh, and actually, and, and by the way, this. I, sometimes I go through this and people say, oh, I got a lot of questions about that. And, and so if, if, if Laura were interested, we'd be glad to come back. We have lawyers at, uh, I just realized I didn't introduce myself. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I, uh, and I'm at a firm called Myrick O'Connell and there are 67 of us. I do elder law, but there are a lot of people that do a lot of other stuff and we have people that just do employment. But you need to understand, if you are hiring somebody on your own, understand, first of all, they are a, an employee. They are not a contractor. 
right? You can't do this on a 1099, right? Unless, under the IRS rules, unless the person that you're hiring is doing this for a lot of other people. If I recall correctly, the magic number is five. If your person who is coming into your home is doing this for, five, for four other people, then perhaps they can call themselves a contractor, right? If not, even if it's your child, <laughs> even if you're paying them, right, uh, they're an employee, which means you gotta withhold wages for them, right? Um, you, gotta you gotta withhold their FICA, right? You, the, 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 you, you, have to, you have to get workman's comp, right? You have to withhold their unemployment insurance. Now, I'm gonna mention there are also companies, I haven't found one in Nantucket, I bet they're there. There are companies that will do this for you, right? There are, there are basically accounting companies that have expanded into this business of saying, we'll do all the paperwork, send us a check, right? Um, uh, there's, a there's a company called Sostic that does a lot of work in Martha's Vineyard that, does, that actually connects people um, with, with folks in their homes, but also does all of this kind of back order stuff. But it is important to, to know that you need to be doing this stuff. This is, I mean, that's the last thing you need is you're trying to save a couple of bucks and so all of a sudden you're getting a letter from the IRS, that's worse than getting a letter from the lawyer, you know? I mean, <laughs> nobody wants that letter. So you need to be aware of that. Next slide. Also these issues. Um, they're employees, so if they fall down, they can sue you. Um, and if they fall down and they're on the job, they are employees and they are on the job, which means they're entitled to workman's comp, right? And you, and you do, and this is the issue that people always, you know, worry about. Like, you know, where did, where did the diamond ring go, you know? Or what happened to the stuff, right? Um, those are real issues. Um, and there's kind of no way, I mean, you can't sign a contract to avoid that. You know, I promise I won't take anything. You know, what does that mean, right? So you, you just need to be aware of those kinds of issues if you have somebody coming in. And once again, no matter who it is, if you are paying them as opposed to making a gift to them, then um, you know, you're subject to the, the IRS rules. Next slide. Uh, which leads to the next piece. On the other hand, if Frank just fell down because he had a stroke uh, or he's been having little mini strokes and he's really worried because he needs to be doing some planning because he hasn't, because he has a lot of money still, uh, and Mary is dead, so, he, so in the event that he needs nursing home care, he can't just give all the money to Mary and qualify for mass health. In that situation, if, or, or if, if Frank is dead and it's just Mary, and Mary is at home with the money that we had talked about earlier, and I, I don't believe we did a separate slide for this, then one of the op, the, there is this rule, there is this, this mass health rule that if, if Frank or Mary ends up in a nursing home, they're single, they need to have less than $2,000 in assets. You've heard all of this stuff, you know, because people all know all of this stuff. And they have to show that they haven't given away any of their assets in the last five years. How many people here have heard of the five-year look-back rule? Oh, yes, a lot of people have heard of that. Um, an exception to that, an exception to that is uh, you can pay your children, you can pay your children to provide care for you if they are really providing care for you. Um, the only, the stipulations though are, the agreement needs to be in writing. Um, you can't make an advance payment to them. You have to be paying them as you go. Mary couldn't be saying, you know, to, to her daughter, Mary Jr., oh, you know, um, I, you, I know you're gonna come every day and so here's my $300,000, you know. But, you have to, but it has to be paid, and the amount of pay that is being paid to the daughter or the son has to be reasonable. It has to be something like what you would be paying to an outside agency. If, that, if Mary or Frank were doing that and paying one of their children and then ended up in a nursing home, then those payments would not be considered gifts and therefore would not have to be returned and paid to the nursing home if they were paid within five years of the day that the person ended up in the nursing home. I see a couple of people kind of scratch, you know, shaking their heads going, oh my God. We're going to talk about this, all of this stuff more next time though because we're going to talk about planning to stay home when you're frail. Next slide. So. We covered a lot of ground. I wanted to leave enough time for questions, but once again, the goal of this exercise is you want to be sleeping well at night. And I guess I'm just suggesting to you that if you are feeling basically okay and you're at home and things are fine, there are a few things that you ought to do, otherwise you should be sleep not be sleeping well at night. One of them is, is once again having that list of drugs, you know, the list that you could bring with you if there is an emergency, right? Another 
is being, you know, close to a, a family doctor or a geriatric care manager or a nurse, somebody who, if you're going through this, is going to be able to help you and give you some independent advice. Because, the, because there are, you know, as, as, as was mentioned, to some, there's a lot of money moving around in the system when you're going to the hospital or to rehab, you know, and everybody has different interests in that system. And you just want to make sure that your interest is taken care of. So I hope this was helpful. Two things, two final things. First of all, could I have a round of applause for our wonderful guests? Thanks. Who are just terrific. Thank you. Um, secondly, in our final program, I don't remember the date. July. July 25th. July 25th. Once again, the theme is planning to stay home. We're going to talk about frailty. What about if you really are frail, is there a set of programs and things that you can do so that you can stay home because nobody wants to die in a nursing home and nobody wants to die in a hospital. You want to be at home when you're frail. Thank you very, very much for coming. Enjoy the summer.